This video is about uh, the book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 1 through 10. The key verse is, uh, Then Peter say, Silver or gold I do not have, but what I do have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. Um, sometimes as a young person, well, we set our goals on, on get well financially instead of giving priority to God. Uh, we shouldn't be a beggar asking for money in, in any way, but uh, be strong on God. Okay, so let's use um, Google and find BibleGetaway.com. Once we are there, we can we can uh, f find the all the old books here, and then we will look for Book of Acts, and then Chapter Three, and uh, we are reading only the the first verse through 10 so let me read only uh, the first three verses one day Peter and John were going up to the temple at the time of prayer at three in the afternoon now a man who was lame from birth was being carried to the temple gate called beautiful where he was put every day to beg from those going into the temple courts. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for money. Peter looked straight at him, as the John. Then Peter say, Look at us. So the man gave then his attention, expecting to get something from them. Then Peter say, Silver or gold I do not have, but what I do have I give it you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. Talking him by the right hand, he helping him up, and instantly the man's feet and ankles became strong. He jumped to his feet and began to walk. Then he went with them into the temple courts, walking and jumping and praising God. When all the people saw him walking and praising God, they recognized him as the same man who used to sit begging at the temple gate called beautiful and they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him now let's listen to dr show um this passage peter talked to the beggar and i do not have silver or gold but i do have i give you in the name of jesus uh, Christ of Nazareth walk. So um, he was asking money, but the Peter and John gave him the power of Jesus and he was able to walk. Um, in 2015 American freshman survey uh, asked the thousands of, uh, of freshmen, incoming uh, freshman students about the, their goals and aspirations and 81% why well, 81.9% answer becoming very well of financially as an essential or very important life objective so it's, it's expected as expected so financial stability uh, and well is uh, probably their goal and aspiration important aspiration however research indicates that as if we pin our hopes of happiness, uh, happiness on money, we are likely to be disappointed. 
So beyond the basic level of security, increased wealth is only slightly correlated with the increased sense of well-being and the correlation tails off after 75,000 a year income. So at the level of wealth also doubled or tripled in the last 50 years in many industrialized nations, actually rather than happiness, depression has actually become more common uh, in these industrial countries. So we can see that the money, although the freshman's goal is uh, you know, making a lot of money, however, the money cannot provide happiness. We can see that. Uh, and then in today's passage, the beggar again asking money, but actually what he needs is rise and walk and knowing by knowing Jesus Christ and accepting Jesus' power. So in today's passage, let's uh, think about the importance uh, of today's uh, uh, healing uh, uh, work by Peter and John, especially Peter. Uh, look at verse 1. One day, Peter and John were going up to the temple at the time of prayer at 3 in the afternoon. So here we can see that the Peter and John going to the temple together uh, in the time of prayer. So in the past, as you can see in, see in, in, in the uh, four Gospels, they were very much competing each other and, and uh, to gain Jesus' attention and then, you know, uh, to be the number one among the disciples. But now they became very much good co-workers uh, together. They are working together uh, uh, and then it's at, at the time of prayer it's not only to go to the temple for prayer it seems that they have in mind about witnessing also. Going to the temple and not only prayer but also witness, witnessing Jesus Christ. Why? Because uh, the time of prayer especially at 3 o'clock there are three times of prayer in the temple. 9 a.m. Uh, 12 noon time and 3 p.m. Those three times of prayer in the temple. So people gather together and pray in the temple. But also times of sacrifice in the in the morning and afternoon. So afternoon prayer, afternoon sacrifice time, 3 p 3 p.m. was the most popular time. And the animal sacrifice and also prayer. So many people, many crowd at the time gathered together. So you can see that the Peter and John wanted to use this opportunity, opportunity to, to preach the gospel and witness of Jesus Christ and enter the temple. And after prayer, probably they pray together and then going to preach the gospel of Jesus. So they, they, said they have an intention. After, as you can see that in today's passage, we will study up to 10 verse 10. But from 11, you can see that he started, Peter started preaching. So remaining passage from 11, verse 11 to 27, is his preaching. He preached uh, the gospel to the crowd, and also at that time there was witness, this man, the man. So you can, you can see that he used this opportunity to preach. Uh, they op use opportunity to preaching. The preaching is a very important activity in their lives. So in here, you can see the intention of prayer and at the same time with witnessing, okay? So, and then also, this 3 p.m. is the most popular time. And then also, also uh, we can see that the, for the beggar also, for the beggar, which means it's a prime time for the beggar too, because there's a lot of people coming into the temple, it's a good time for him too, to uh, begging the money. So you can see also that the Peter, in chapter 2, so who spoke? It's Peter spoke, right? And the remaining disciples standing beside. And here you can see that in the second chapter 3, also P Peter stood up and spoke, uh, speaking, but John was uh, standing by. You can see John is co-working. He doesn't want, you know, he, in the past he wanted to be number one and to stand up and speaking, but quietly John is co-working together with Peter. So you see this, and then what's the meaning of two? So you, see, you can see what? Jesus sent out the disciples two and two, two by two in his public ministry. So send out the disciples two by two. Why, why two? Because uh, here in, in the witnessing, 
you need to have a two person as a witness of, uh, to testify something in the court. So you can see that John is uh, just uh, supporting uh, Peter, and then Peter make a speak, make him speak, so that he can, you know, uh, speak well. And John is. Uh, so we need in our ministry also somebody need to be a Peter, but somebody also need to be uh, John, supporting and praying, right? And then in the Old Testament, Moses and Aaron, right? Moses and Aaron always they, they go together to serve God. So you can see that the co-working is very important in God's ministry. Ministry, and also here, as I said, the largest crowd does have been found at this time of sacrifice and also prayer. And then Peter and John were aware, and then uh, went to the temple for prayer and witness. Okay, so oh, you can oh, you can see that we we. When we go to campus and praise, we pray and then also kind of try to witness. It's uh, the very... Uh... So now verse 2. Look at verse 2. Now a man who was lame for birth, from birth was being carried to the temple gate called the beautiful. So lame from birth was being carried. So somebody needs to... Because he could not walk. So somebody, some people carried him to the temple gate. Where he was put every day to back from those going into the temple courts. You can see that every day he came to you know, court and begging the money. So that's a, that was the, the way he can survive day by, day by day, so begging. And then, as I said, this time, 3 o'clock, 3, 3 p.m. is probably very important time, prime time for him. And then also, uh, what is the temple beautiful gate? So this is the temple model of temple, outside the temple wall, and then this is a temple, okay? And then this is called Gentile court, court of Gentiles. So anybody can come in, but only this temple court Gentile cannot get enter, but women can enter here. So you can see that the, this is a temple, uh, and then this is a woman's court, and men's court, and priest court here. So this is a uh, Nico, uh, Nicano gate is uh, as a ga gating from women's court to men's court, but here is uh, from Gentiles court to women's court. The gate is called the beautiful gate here. So uh, here at the gate, this beggar was begging for money here. Okay, I will, I will speak. I will talk about this uh, in a while, uh, a little later. The beggar, if you are lame, blind. Any defect, you are not supposed to enter the women's court. They are not allowed. So the law, Moses' law, prohibit any any lame people, any disabled people can they cannot enter to the court. So they this is the limit of beggars. They can enter the back, you know, this this uh, area. So he was probably begging right entrance. Uh, he was begging for money. And then in Rabbi, Rabbi's uh, teaching. At that time, Jewish teaching, there are three pillars of Jewish faith. First one is the Torah, reading the Bible, and Torah is a very important uh, base of their reading the Bible and studying the Bible is very important. Number one. Number two is worship. They have to worship. Number three is showing the kindness and charity. This is number three. So they, that's an expression of faith. Okay? So... Uh, giving was one of the main ways to show kindness and thus considered as a major expression of one's devotion to God. So it's very, very important donation and tragedy and giving. So when you enter the, the, the temple, they consider to worship God, right? So this is probably the best place to get money, you know, begging money. Because the people, when they donate the money, is, a, is a, their commitment to God. It's an expression of their commitment to God. So, as uh, probably many beggars, maybe around this temple area, especially sacrifice time, the most busy time of the day. Okay, he was begging here. And if you look at the, this beggar, as you can see here, he was uh, lame from birth. This is a con congenital defect. You can see that the, he had congenital defect that the, he never walked in his life. And then in Chapter 4, it seems that he's over 40 years old. Meaning that he has, been, he has been begging for more than 4 years, you know, his life, lifetime. 
he was a beggar. And then he was lame for more than 40 years. So you can see how miserable he was, you know, how miserable he was from the beginning, from birth, he was not able to walk. This miserable beggar was begging for money. So maybe he doesn't have even hope to walk anymore. Okay, so this was a scene uh, of today's passage. Then what happened? Okay, number three, this is verse three. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for money. As you can expect here, this entrance of the temple, there are other beggars too, but here you can see that this beggar asking money. Peter took straight at him, as did John, then Peter said, look at us. So the man gave them his attention, expecting to get something from them. So usually people don't even look at it and then just toss the money and enter the temple. But suddenly, these two men, Peter and John, ask him, look at us. So he probably expecting more special donation maybe. Oh, there's something big coming up. So, so he's looking at them, expecting to get something more. From them. Then Peter said, okay, verse 6, this. Let's read these key verse together. This is a key verse. Actually, say not seven verses, six. Let's read this verse together. Let's go. Then Peter said, silver or gold I do not have, but what I do have I give you. In the name of Jesus, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. So what the beggar really needs is Jesus. He's asking money in the gate. But what he really need is Jesus and, and then rise up and walk. That's what he really needs. So because money cannot, can make him probably convenient, he can survive several more days. However, cannot make him walk. It's the most important in his life. In the become independent. Become independent and walk and serve God. So sim, uh, similar you can see this healing ministry is a similar to this healing ministry, but here the difference is Jesus said just walk, right? But here you can see that the Peter mentioned in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So he's using the authority of Jesus Christ. That's the difference. Uh, so, and then also you can see that the, in the name of Jesus, it is uh, to invoke the name of Jesus is to call upon his authority and power. In real sense then, Jesus through Peter is continuing Jesus' healing ministry. So in the name of Jesus, Jesus heal, Jesus is healing ministry for his uh, you know, public ministry, he used a lot of healing. And then now Peter is continuing his healing ministry. Then in verse seven and eight, Taking him by the right hand, he helped him up, and instantly the man's feet and ankles became strong. He jumped to his feet and began to walk. Then he went with them into the temple courts, walking and jumping and praising God. Peter grasped the man's right hand and lifted him up, and his feet and ankles became strong and began to walk with his own strength. Okay, so then he entered the sanctuary with Peter and John. As I said, as a lame beggar, he sat in the court of gent at the gate of the temple, but never entered the temple court in, in his past because of the law prohibited, as I mentioned, in, as, based on Leviticus chapter 27. So he's not supposed So in his life, he never, he wanted to worship God in the temple, but he was not able to, able to because of his condition. So you can see that this healing is not only physical healing, but also spiritual healing, spiritual acceptance to God. So because it is something prohibited him to enter the, uh, the court of God and the temple court, but now so he received physical healing, through this physical healing, what happened? He received spiritual healing too, so that he can approach to God. So you can see that the, you can see that the condition of our sins, right, make us lame. Sin make us lame, so that we we become powerless. Become powerless. We become uh, uh, dependent on others and blaming others because of the sin. Make us depressed and and then powerless, right? 
However, when we receive forgiveness of, Jesus, uh, of sins through the name of Jesus Christ, what happens? We get strength to rise up. Not only physically we receive strength, but also what happens? We can be accepted by God. We can approach to God freely from that uh, time on. So that's very important meaning here. We can see this healing ministry through this, uh, the Peter and, 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 and uh, this lame man. For, for, year, for, for 40 years from birth. Now, spiritual acceptance, right? For the first time in his life. So this, this is what happened also to us. Not only, right, the physical healing, but also when spiritual healing happened, we will be also accept, accepted by God. And then we can freely approach Him. Uh, then, when all the people in verse 9 and 10, when all... The people saw him walking and praising God. They recognized him as the same man who used to sit begging at the temple gate called the Beautiful. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened. Okay? So, so because he, for 40 years, he begged at the same location. Same location every day. What happened? Everyone recognized him. Because, you know, you see every day when you go to the temple, oh, this man is uh, from birth. He was begging. Now... Is a, is a, is a walking, jumping, and praising God. How amazing it is. So suddenly, he became wonderful witness of Jesus Christ. Huh? Can never, anyone, can, who, can, who can be a good witness like him, right? He can uh, compete with like him. So he became the best witness in Jerusalem area. So everybody knows him in Jerusalem, and he became the best witness. Is jumping, walking, and praising God. Is living with. He became the living witness of Jesus Christ. And then, how powerful would it be when Peter uh, preached the gospel, standing by, uh, you know, by he stand by, uh, by Peter. So, um, so you can see that in miracle in Old Testament, uh, in in New Testament in Jesus' public ministry, and also Book of Acts, there are several important healing ministry. But always, healing was used. Healing was used to preach the gospel and more effectively. Clear connection. You can see the clear connection. God is using this healing ministry to, to witness better, to, to preach the gospel better, more effectively. That's what Jesus did also in his public ministry. Never Jesus focused on healing itself, right? Through the healing, Jesus wanted, Jesus wanted to show him, his identity as the Son of God at the same time showing the gospel, the meaning of the gospel. So that is very important. Uh, so now, uh, in nowadays, that much miracle is not happening right uh, nowadays because it's not necessary. So, but if sometimes necessary miracle happens still, but it's much less. Because at that time, when the uh, gospel was preached in the early church, it was very pretty important for, to authenticate the ministry of the, the, the disciples, okay? But the important thing is you to remember is always healing connected the, the preaching and witnessing and so that the people may open their eyes, open their heart to listen to the gospel so that they can accept the gospel because the forgiveness of sins comes from Jesus Christ by faith, right? So, so keep in mind, okay? so today, you can see this, is, this man is jump, jumping around, two disciples here. So, and what's the meaning of today's passage? Let's read the key verse, verse 6 together. One more time, let's go. Then Peter said, Silver or gold I do not have, but what I do have I give you. In the name of Jesus, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. Peter said, Silver or gold I do not have. He doesn't have money, but what he had was Jesus. And in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, he commanded the man, walk. So, real, we have a, a problem in our life. So we only solve the pro real problem in our life, practical problem in our life, want to be resolved. And then he was asking money so that he can survive day by day. The money cannot make him walk. Money cannot make his life and, and uh, alive. But what he needs is strength, 
What he needs is really strength to rise up and walk. Right? That's what he needs. And Peter and John didn't provide him money, but he provided strength through in the name of Jesus Christ. Strength to walk, rise up and walk. That's what we need. Right? That's what we need uh, in our lives. So we sometimes want to be this problem, that problem resolved. But that's not the solution because it's temporary. But what we need is, it, is strength to rise up and walk independently and serve God and praising God. That's what God wants us to be. God, God wants us to do. Right? So then we sometimes have a... People may have some beggar mentality and difficult situation blaming others and or depend on others' help. But we need Jesus to stand on our feet and then and then walk walk and then praising God so uh, um, but how can we do this that is in the name of Jesus when we depend on when we trust in Jesus name we'll have strength we'll have strength to rise up and walk right so, so not only that we can ever we're able to Rise and walk like Him, but also then you become true witness of God. If, uh, if you continually depend on uh, money or some something uh, external, you never be able to become true witness of God, right? But when He was able to walk and jump, then He can become true witness of Jesus Christ. So God really wants us to. That's what God really wants. Instead of providing some money, right, time, time by time, you know, to solve the problem. But he wants us to rise up, trusting in the Jesus name. Then you can become, and his living uh, power of Jesus Christ. Then we can glorify God like him. So let's pray uh, that we have a Jesus Christ in our hearts, right? We have Jesus. It's given... Jesus was given, Jesus' name was given to us, but the problem is how much we depend on His name. So let's pray that we may depend on His name and become witness of Jesus Christ. That's the miracle that God wants. And also, also when we help others, also same thing. So we can we cannot give money, but we can, we have what we have is what the name of Jesus. So we can provide, so that they can also uh, become. Uh, you know, blessing become a blessing.